Okay, so today I'm going to show you how to uh, make a uh, proper six-sided snowflake. Why does it have to be six sides? So uh, a few, a couple months ago, just before Christmas, um, I was uh, talking to some of the designers um, at work that I work with, and I was talking about how snowflakes have six sides on them, like six sides all the time, because that's just you know how the how the water molecules are. These are my little models of water molecules. I got two hydrogens, H2 and one O, oxygen. And you need just six to show um, the basic setup for this. You might think like, oh, well, you know, they just go up like, like this. But the problem is, is that uh, the hydrogens really don't wanna be next to each other if they can help it. We're gonna put the first one like that. And then this one, um, wait a minute, oh boy. I did this earlier, I gotta find my reference. Ta-da, like that. So this first one I'm gonna put like that, yeah. And the next one is going to go upward. So this is gonna be connecting to like another, another uh, carbon, or another carbon, another uh, oxygen molecule. This one goes like this, my picture's wrong. And this one goes like this, there we go. And now you can see, based on this arrangement, you can see very clearly why it has to be uh, six sides. Now, when the snowflake forms, especially if it forms very slowly, you get um, more and more uh, molecules coming in and they'll fit into the next piece of the pattern. So right here would be another one of those vertical ones and you get a nice, uh, you know, three-dimensional repeating lattice. Actually, nobody in my office happened to know that snowflakes are supposed to have six sides. They thought like, you know, they've heard the thing about how snowflakes are all unique. And so they thought, oh, well, they have all sorts of different sides. But because of the actual, you know, uh, molecular structure of water, um, it always tends to form in these, in these six-sided shapes. The uniqueness of the snowflake actually comes from whatever slight uh, lumpiness that, that happens based on whatever the water first condenses around. So step one is to take whatever paper you have and fold up one of the corners so you can get a square to begin with. You might begin to notice when uh, snowflake patterns out in the real world, um, you know, look good as in this case, or don't always make the cut because this one here, as you can see, has a whopping eight sides. That's not right. Well, now, next step you're gonna do is holding triangle thusly, fold it over. Now, here is typically where people make a mistake because it would be real simple to just fold it over again, but that's not what we're doing. And the reason we're not doing that is because if I uh, folded it over again, I would end up with a snowflake that had a multiple of four. As you can see, it has a whopping eight sides. That's not right. I don't know what kind of molecule that this is based off of, and, and, and it's beautiful, don't get me wrong, but uh, the thing is, is that this is the wrong shape for a snowflake. So we have to get some uh, different angles in here. Imagine that um, you kind of have a, a, a straight line coming up here, and you fold over this piece such that if you just look at right here, you look at this bottom, that there's the same amount here as here, like so. And then if you did it right, this side will fold right over and meet perfectly on the other side. And mine didn't. Back it up a little bit. It was, it was, it's perfectly fine now. See, it's, it's nice and even. Point is that you end up with kind of a little um, Star Trek symbol. And the thing is, is that this now gives us the right sort of angle down here so that when you go and you do all your cutty magic, um, you end up with the right sort of symmetry for the snowflake. So um, I'm a graphic designer in my day job and it's important to me that these sorts of things are, are, are accurate because um, you know, a lot of people have the misconception that, for instance, snowflakes can have any number of sides because that's what makes them unique. But really the value of the uniqueness of a snowflake comes from the fact that they have such a regular pattern and you would think that they were all the same because when you look at a bunch of them in a group, they don't sell themselves as being all that different. But when you look in really close, you can see that even though they are all similar, they are nonetheless still unique. When we uh, go to open this up now, we end up with a nice little six-pointed star 
in the middle. So in addition to the molecules setting up that initial structure and being able to make wonderfully beautiful uh, snowflakes with, with paper, you can actually photograph snowflakes for yourself with just your cell phone uh, camera. Um, but then of course, in Colorado here, it, it was unseasonably warm and I had to wait for two months before it finally started snowing. But as you can see, it's finally snowing. So first you're gonna need uh, something black for the snow to land on. And then you're going to need to get a little lens. I got this out of the Toy Cat laser. I'll unscrew. Some of them will sometimes have a lens um, in this little cap piece, but uh, the ones that I have don't. After you take that off, grab some pliers and just kind of gingerly pull out this plastic. So if I just grab it, there we go. So now you can kind of, you can just barely, barely see, kind of see the lens in there. Oh, it doesn't want to come out yet. The other thing to do sometimes is, is uh, unscrew the back end. Uh, sometimes that helps. Aha! See? There, success. So just keep picking at it until there is a beautiful little lens for your cell phone. You need a bobby pin, some tape, and your cell phone. Um, now, this is my old cell phone, but um, I took the uh, case off of it because I found that it works a lot better if you can get the lens right up on top of it. You put the, the lens in there, bobby pin like that, and then you just set it right over the lens of your camera or on, on your cell phone like that. And then you just tape it on. The better you can center this, the better it will be. Now I put a little bit of tape on the top and on the bottom. Um, and they also, the other thing that's kind of useful to have around is a, just a little paintbrush um, for kind of moving them around. All right, if I go to my camera, you can see my phone is just a lot of blurriness, but if we go in really, really close and basically touch the thing, then we have a really awesome macro lens. And this is what we're gonna use for snowflakes. Oh boy, it's cold. Um, so ideally, uh, what works best is if you can leave whatever the black thing you're using um, out for a really long time. There's a good one. Uh, so now I'm gonna see if I can simultaneously take a picture and record myself taking a picture. Bah! Oh no, it's not the flash on. Okay, flash off. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put my cell phone here on record. There's a good one. See, it's got six sides. Oh, the phone died. Dang it. <sighs> All right, so it's been a couple hours now um, and it's a bit darker, um, but uh, I think I'll have enough light to still be able to uh, do this with, because uh, I went out and I recharged my phone. Of course, it's still all set up. Ah, there's a good one. So you can see, oh, nice. So you can get some really good pictures this way. I'm gonna go ahead and switch to camera mode again and try and get this one. Before it melts. You do have to be pretty down on top of them, but once they get in focus, ugh, pretty epic. Now, another good trick, especially since it's getting a bit darker, is to get a flashlight. So you can do kind of a raking light across the snowflake. Uh, the wind, then this is what the paintbrush is for. You can get rid of the bits that you don't want. And then you can even sort of grab one and move it. Ooh, that's a good one. If I can get it. Oh, that's a good one. This does do a bit of a number on your camera's focusing abilities, but come on, don't melt, don't melt. See, it melted. <laughs> um, but like anything with lenses, you do spend a good amount of time just sort of um, looking for the thing you thought you had in focus there. Oh, that one broke when I picked it up. Ooh, maybe I'll just leave that one there. Get a good little bit of light on it. Oh, come on, come on, focus. Oh, there you are, come on. 
And I found with my super shaky hands that it's helpful to try and take a few pictures because one of them maybe won't suck. Anyway, I hope that little demonstration on the proper way to fold a snowflake was helpful for you. More importantly, I, I hope that you learned about the correct way that snowflakes shape themselves. You have the tools now to be able to go and take not only informative pictures, but really awesome snowflake pictures to use in whatever arts you choose to apply them to. But you don't have to take my word for it because you can science it. Oh yeah, um, I also uh, went ahead and put this on the blog as usual, even though it's been a bit of a break, um, and hopefully there'll be more to come. Make a New Year's resolution to never make an eight-sided snowflake again.